And now, your 5 o'clock news on Channel 14. Welcome back to WCTV and thank you for joining us at 5. My name is Logan Lepiscopo. And I'm Meg Berry. The Ehive has finally opened up to students to use and Meg Berry took a closer look into the new area. After a semester long of construction, the new Ehive with its state of the art maker space and wood shop is finally open. Let's go take a look. Big part of this whole program is giving a, a students an opportunity to have a place to really kind of work out different ideas, concepts, thinking in the business mind, if you have an idea for a new venture, you have a place to get uh, advice. Not only does this space offer professional guidance, but the resources to make an idea reality. We have now with the Makerspace and the Woodshop, the state of the art centers here on, in the Ehive, um, the ability that students can create products, and really get something up and running. And the Waynesburg students especially love the space. It's just kind of like revolutionary. You know, it's just kind of good to see uh, the new technology in here, the new uh, equipment and stuff like that. So, I don't know, it's just really good. Here in the Ehive, all majors are welcome and creativity is encouraged. I'm Meg Berry, reporting for WCTV News. A goldfish tank event was held in the Ehive, and no, there weren't any actual goldfish. Logan Lepiscopo has the story. The goldfish tank event was held in the newly finished Ehive here at Waynesburg University. This event was designed for students to learn about starting a business and to see what services the Ehive has to offer for young entrepreneurs. Students that attended the event also had the opportunity to just play games and enjoy snacks that were provided. The Goldfish Tank event was one of four Shark Tank series events to be held in the Ehive. The Dolphin Tank events will be held on February 28th and April 3rd, as well as the final event, the Shark Tank, held April 23rd. For WCTV News, I'm Logan Lepiscopo. What if I told you D3 athletes have the opportunity to get paid? WCTV's Danny Flynn has the story. I think D3 is one of the best places to go if you want to get a great education. During the 2024 NCAA convention in Phoenix on January 13th, the Division III delegates came together and finalized that D3 athletes will not be awarded financial aid based on athletic leadership, ability, participation, or performance. For them to just say it again, hey, we're still not going to have athletic scholarships, I think it's just the, the fact that some schools won't have that funding. So I think it would just put us on like, okay, we're at the same level as them, like we're equals. Athletic scholarships are used to help athletes financially and as a way to help persuade them to a certain school based on their ability to play. Not only that, but are seen as rewards for athletes as a way of payment for all their hard work that they put into their respective sport. Uh, another thing that would be more beneficial, it would just make more students come here. Um, it will allow more students to have more opportunities to do, to continue to pursue a dream that they might have or a sport that, you know, they might be good in and they feel like they could go pretty far in. D3 schools prioritize academics over athletics, which means they may not have the resources or desire to invest in attracting top athletic talent through scholarships. However, they do provide financial aid packages based on academic merit or need-based assistance. So I don't think it could hurt if they were to like allow us to actually get legitimate money for athletics. For WCTV, I'm Danny Flynn. Waynesburg University's football team now has a chance to participate in an NCAA Division III bowl game. Our own Logan Lepiscopo has the story. Four Division III athletic conferences have officially come together to create a new bowl series for their football programs. One of those conferences includes Waynesburg University's very own President's Athletic Conference. The Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference, North Coast Athletic Conference, Ohio Athletic Conference, and the President's Athletic Conference will take part in the inaugural Open Doors Bowl Series. Yeah, so um, all four leagues had been working on different potential uh, postseason opportunities, and each of those probably looked a little bit different. Um, and, and honestly, not all of them were connected with each other. 
each conference will have the highest ranked team not to make the NCAA tournament in a one day, two game series. The set date for this tournament is November 23rd, 2024 at the Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium in Canton, Ohio. They did a great job with it. I think it'll be a huge thing for our league. It'll be a huge thing for our region because you got the four, four big Division three conferences in the area are going to play. You know, their second place teams are going to play against each other, or at least the ones that don't make the NCAA tournament. This being the same field that the National Football League kicks off every season with its traditional Hall of Fame preseason game. This will add a third postseason opportunity for schools like Waynesburg and the President's Athletic Conference. And that others of us do not have another bowl opportunity. And again, we were looking for, for those and trying to figure out what might be best. Um, and, then, and then this opportunity came along. The top team in the PAC moves to the NCAA playoffs. The runner-up will now be eligible for the Open Doors Bowl Series and, of course, the long-standing ECAC Bowl. Here at Waynesburg University, the football team has not been part of a bowl game since their 2014 season, in which they finished third in the President's Athletic Conference. That game was a 59-36 loss to Buffalo State at home, John F. Wiley Stadium. For WCTV Sports, I'm Logan Lepiscopo. The Greene County United Soccer Club is looking for any soccer players in the Greene County area interested in playing this spring. Tyler Zeman has more. With spring right around the corner, it is time for local youth sports teams like the Greene County United Soccer Club to find new players for the upcoming season. Leagues like the Greene County United Soccer Club are holding late registration periods for anyone interested in playing in-house or travel soccer for the 2024 spring season. The club is looking for boys or girls ranging from the age of 5 to 19 years old. Late signups will begin February 15th and end on February 19th. Green County United Soccer Club is also handing out scholarships for those who may need it. For WCTV, I'm Tyler Zeman. Next on 5, Donald Trump has won the New Hampshire primary and what that means for his GOP opponent, Nikki Haley. Plus, one thing to look at, the Supreme Court is now allowing for Border Patrol to remove razor wire along the Texas-Mexico border. And what Texas Governor Greg Abbott had to say. Details when we come back. Hey, how you doing? Exciting to be here. Hey, how's your week been? Okay. Mm. Yeah! <laughs> oh. Hope everything else outside of basketball is good. Welcome back into the newscast live at 5. On January 28th, three U.S. troops were killed and dozens of Jordan citizens were wounded in a drone attack. CNN's Gloria Pasmino reports. Today is a very difficult day for Americans, so our deepest condolences go out to the families, the friends, and the units, uh, obviously, who lost, uh, who lost three friends, uh, three colleagues.
the president needs to take appropriate action to bring the perpetrators to justice, but we also need to de-escalate in that region, and having a ceasefire with the release of all hostages would do that. We'll do what we have to do to protect our troops, our facilities, our national security interests in the region. Two U.S. officials told CNN that the hostile drone followed an American drone that was returning to the base, leading to confusion and the delayed U.S. response. The officials said it's unclear at this time if the enemy drone followed on purpose or if it was a coincidence. The Biden administration, a victory in its ongoing legal fight with Texas Governor Greg, Greg Abbott. The ruling applies to the section of the Rio Grande where state officials had blocked access to border agents. Three migrants recently drowned in the area, which promoted the White House to press the Supreme Court to intervene. In addition to the razor wire, Texas has also placed buoys in the river near Eagle Pass in an effort to stop migrants from crossing. That floating barrier is also the subject of legal battle between the state and the Biden administration. In response to the last Monday's Supreme Court ruling, the Texas governor's press secretary says Abbott will continue to fight to defend Texas property and secure the border. Arkansas has added new police dogs to the squad. However, they are not your typical furry officers. Two out of the six dogs on the force, Kratos and Harley, are the first ever German short-haired pointers on the team. They also introduced their first female handler, Kayla Potts. The department also allows other local agencies to use their single-use and dual-purpose canines, like Duke, who are used both in schools. They are now preparing Creed, another German short-haired pointer, to retire Dutch, the 10-year-old Dutch Shepherd, after earning his title of the department's longest working canine. While those two dogs are ready for action, Creed will be making his official debut by March of this year. If you can't afford your rent, you're in good company. According to Harvard University, half of all renters in the U.S. are paying more in rent than they should. That de that's defined as rent using up more than 30% of your income. The good news is rent is actually going down in most of the country. The median asking rent is just above $1,700, which is down $63 from its peak in July of 2022. That's going to vary from city to city, but even in Manhattan, rents dropped from the first time than more than two years since November. That's all for national news. Up next is Haley Ryan with Business and Entertainment. But first, let's take a look outside with Seth Adam, who has a brief weather update. We are on Waynesburg campus, around 47 degrees outside right now. The sun has finally peeked its head through the clouds. We're going to be seeing some more sun later in the week, but stay tuned for that right here on WCTV. Hello everyone and welcome back to the newscast live at 5. I'm Haley Ryan and here is your business and entertainment update. Reba McIntyre could be back as TV's leading lady. The country singer is set to star and executive produce a pilot for an untitled NBC Universal sitcom. In the show, McIntyre's character inherits her father's restaurant and discovers her new business partner is a half-sister she never knew about. 
McIntyre's last leading role was on ABC's Malibu Country in 2013, which ran for one season. Currently, she is a coach on the singing competition show, The Voice. A New York business owner is getting a taste of Hollywood, and Hollywood is getting a taste of her Barbie-themed treats. Marcus Solis reports. Ben Stiller has had them, Dustin Hoffman, um, Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler ordered them for weeks. She's not name dropping. Anne Marie Durasmo is on her way to becoming the pretzel purveyor to the stars. For the sixth time, her posh pretzels will be included in a swag bag given to the top nominees at the Academy Awards. Ta da! This year's theme Barbie, of course. Some of them have a light strawberry taste, and we did uh, all pink, and we did uh, gold nonpareils, and then we did also gold crystals. We just kept it all pink. Durasmo opened the shop on North Broadway nearly 10 years ago as a side business while working full time at a hospital. On a lark, she reached out to Distinctive Assets, the company behind the Everyone Wins independent gift bags that are handed out on Oscar night. I love that it was a female owned brand. I love that she was a mom making things happen. Uh, she was easy to work with, and um, I just thought it was an amazing inclusion. Durasmo has made custom creations for events ranging from the 50th anniversary of hip hop concert to Martha Stewart's birthday party. Now she's getting ready to ship dozens of these gold boxes out west. No, she doesn't get to attend, but yes, she's hoping for a little Hollywood magic. I mean, if Ryan Gosling happens to have one, I, I wouldn't complain. <laughs> I wouldn't be upset. <laughs> the Academy Awards will air March 10th on ABC. Everyone's afraid of something, but what do you do when you're afraid of everything? David Daniel has a look at a family film about facing your fears. Good night, Orion. But all the things I'm afraid of, I'm most afraid of the dark. You come watch me do my job for one night, and you'll finally see that I'm nothing to be afraid of. Especially Orion has really like over dramatic, you know, kind of anxiety. So I think everyone, everyone in, in, a, in a way has their own. Orion, I'm gonna get you to overcome your fears if it kills me. And I'm immortal, by the way, so I've got all the time in the world. Abrasive and sort of uh, animated, for lack of a more on the nose term. Uh, and then. At the same time, it can be vulnerable, and, and you realize that this is a guy who's kind of hurting and feels misunderstood. Every day I bring brightness and hope to the world, and you bring the exact opposite. Oh, whatever. We have a character, we don't want to hear her very well. For, for a studio, that's like, what? Yeah. And we have a dark, and we don't want to see him very well. And they're like, what? You really think you can fix everything I'm afraid of in one night? One night can change everything. That is going to do it for business and entertainment. Up next is Joey Shirillo with your sports report. You're watching WCTV, where we aim to bring you the best local coverage of what you care about most. Everything from local businesses to hometown sports and the latest weather. We're keeping up to date with what you need to know about issues that affect our campus and our community. We're telling the stories that matter, celebrating our past, our future, and our potential. So tune in for all the latest buzz right here on WCTV Channel 14, Waynesburg. Welcome back to the newscast live at 5. I'm Joseph Cirillo and this is your sports update. For Waynesburg Athletics, men's and women's basketball played against Geneva yesterday, traveling just an hour north, not to Ohio though. Women's hoops started off at 5 p.m. losing 77 to 52 against the Golden Tornadoes. This brings the Lady Jays record to 4 and 16 and conference record to 3 and 12. They will play Allegheny this Saturday with a tip off, tip -off time at 1 p.m. Waynesburg basketball tipped off shortly after the women's at 7 p.m. facing the Golden Tornadoes at Matheny Fieldhouse, starting off strong with Anton Baker getting eight early points and ending the night with 22 points. But this could not keep the Yellow Jackets afloat. Sadly, Baker couldn't carry the team, bringing 67-52 loss and their record to an even 10-10. 10 10. 
and their conference record to 7-8. and eight. Waynesburg Wrestling had a match against Teal College this past Friday. They fell to the Tomcats 26-22 after the 285-pound weight class forfeit. The Yellow Jackets will travel to Barry, Ohio this Saturday for the 37th annual John Suma Invitational. For Green, for Green County girls basketball tonight, Carmichael's will host Washington, Jefferson Morgan will host Avil, Mapletown will host Geibel Catholic, Waynesburg Central hosts Yock, and West Green hosts Manesson. For tomorrow's basketball for boys, Carmichael's will host Frazier, Jefferson Morgan hosts California, Mapletown hosts Geibel Catholic, West Green will host Manesson, and Waynesburg Central will travel to face Washington. In Pittsburgh sports, Pitt Panthers men's basketball won against Wake Forest last night, 77-72, bringing their overall record to 13-8 and, and conference record to 4-6. They will face Notre Dame this Saturday at 6 p.m. For women's basketball, the Panthers are 7-14 and 14 on the season with a conference record of 1-7. They face the Duke Blue Devils tonight in Pittsburgh at 7 p.m. The Penguins entered the All-Star break at the fifth spot in the Metropolitan Division at 22-17-7. They send Sidney Crosby to Toronto to represent the Penguins in the All-Star game. In the baseball offseason, the Pirates continue to surprise fans with moves such as officially signing All-Star closer Aroldis Chapman. Spring training for them will start at the end of February, playing the Minnesota Twins on February 24th. They have invited their number one picks, Paul Skeens and Tamar Johnson, to Breedington, Florida to participate in spring training as they look to secure a spot on the roster in the 2024 season. Opening day is March 28th. In Steelers news, the offensive coordinator position has been filled with former Atlanta Falcons head coach Arthur Smith. And today, February 1st, is the 15th anniversary of the Steelers' sixth Super Bowl win against the Arizona Cardinals, 27-23. After Ben Roethlisberger threw a toe-dragging touchdown pass to Santonio Holmes securing the victory, the Steelers became the first team in NFL history with six Super Bowl victories. That's all for your sports update. I'm Joseph Cirillo. Up next is weather with Seth Adams, so don't go anywhere. Good evening, Waynesburg. I'm Seth Adams, and I'll be giving you the weather for this upcoming week. Currently, it is 45 degrees outside with partly cloudy skies, and it will stay around that 40-degree mark throughout the entire night. Tomorrow will be similar to today with a high of 42 and mostly cloudy all throughout the day, and the low will reach down to 32 degrees. But for that weekend coming up, we'll be seeing a high of 47 on Saturday and sunny with a low of 27 and Sunday we will be seeing some more sun with a high of 49 and low of 26 and to start that work week Monday we will see a high of 48 a low of 27 Tuesday we will be seeing a high of 48 as well with a low of 25 and to wrap it up on Wednesday there will be a high of 46 and a low of 25 with sunny skies on all three of those days that's your week in weather now sending it back to the desk Thank you very much, Seth. That's going to do it for this week's newscast. Thank you all for tuning in and come back next Thursday for our next newscast live at 5. This has been a production of Waynesburg Community Television.